Hey all, welcome on Travels and Code channel. Today we will talk about the latest feature in ES2020, it's uh, JavaScript's latest feature. So, today we will talk about global this, private class variables, promise all settled, knowledge collision operator, optional chaining operator and begin. So, let's start. Let's start from the first one, global this. So, what does it mean global this? Let's take a look on console log this, for example. So it's big, let's open console. So console log this. It shows a link for a window. In the same case, in the same time, we can call console log window it's the same object and also the same console log self which shows the same window and again console log frames all these variables they are pointing to window object and uh, what is global this let's take a look and global this is the same global object window but what's important for example in case we are using web workers we can use just self variable in case we are using node.js there is a global variable let's take a look let's open node.js and uh, console log global global so it's a global variable, but in Node.js we have no access to console. We don't have window. So in this case we can use the unified variable, it's a global this. So in case we call console log global this, we will have access to global in Node.js and in the same case we will have access to window in the browser. So. It's a small change, small feature, but it's very important. Let's go to the next one. It's a private class variables. Right now in JavaScript, we can create our classes and the latest feature what we can use is private properties. So let's create a class. And create the first, first property, for example, message. And method greet. So let's create instance. Okay, and let's call greet method in this instance. Let's call greeting greet. So in this case we have hi, but in the same time I can call directly message. So console log greeting message. And we have the same access to this variable and uh, it's not uh, what we expected in uh, classical object-oriented programming because we need uh, encapsulation and all private methods should be hidden. So let's hide this message and uh, in latest version we can use with this symbol we can hide the message and right now in case as you see we will, we will see the undefined for the second one and for this one we need update it. Right now, if we want to access to this property, we need to call this and uh, through the symbol message. And in case we want to call directly with message, we haven't this access, but let's try to do this one. So the same. Right now, we have error because we can't we can get private property. Also, let's check our config. Let's sure let's be sure that it's a Babel preprocessor. Let's save it. And the same. Anyway, so right now we can create private properties with uh, this character, and uh, it's how works uh, private class variables. Okay. Let's go to the next one, and it's the promise all settled. 
So what is promise all, all settled? We already had promise all, but the promise all works in a bit another way. So let's take a look how work promise all settled. So let's create a couple of promises. The first one it will be resolving in one second and second one it will be rejected in one second. And uh, let's try to use promise. Our cycle it accepts the array of promises as the, the same as promise all and uh, in result then we have data and uh, let's open this data. What we have inside of this data. So right now we can see that we have object with the status for the first one it's fulfilled and the value and for another one it's a reason undefined and the status. So we see the result of two promises and uh, we have a result uh, reason why this why this promise was rejected. For example, if we want to get this reason, we can we can pass some reason, and here we see this the same object. The first one was fulfilled. And let's pass some value. For example, value. So we have we have value for the first one it was resolved and we have reason was the second one was rejected and uh, let's take a look at the third one let's create one new promise it will be promise three and it will be resolve just resolve and we will pass it here of course. What do we see? We have three promises. The second was the second one was rejected, but the third one was fulfilled with the result. And uh, in this case, all settled. It waited for all promises, and uh, even if one of them was rejected, every other promises were fulfilled, and uh, we have result of these uh, promises. But let's compare with uh, all what we will have. So in case we, we are using promise all and when we try to get that we don't see anything because the second promise was rejected. In this case we need to call catch and get error and console and open this error. Let's take a look and uh, here we see that it was just rejected. So we see that uh, one promise was rejected and we do not have a result of all promises. Let's check change to resolve. And in this case we have array of all resolved promises, but if one of them is rejected, we don't have results at all. And it's a small difference between promise all and promise all settled. Okay, let's go to the next one. And the next one is knowledge collision operator. What is this? Okay, knowledge collision operator. So JavaScript is dynamic type language, and we need to take and we need to keep JavaScript treatment of true false values. So let's imagine that we have an object person. And we have empty name and we have age zero. Let's try to console some properties. So it will be person, file, name. Okay, it's was a comment. And uh, so right now we have name, it's empty string. But usually we, what we're doing, in case if we, some, if we have some empty value, we, will, we can pass another default value. So let's edit. Anonymous. And in our case, if this value is empty, we will show another value for default. And let's check for the age. And 
the same it's zero and if we want pass some default value we will put 18 and now it's 18 and the name is anonymous so what is the implementation of so and in our case let's check this knowledge collision operator let's copy the first one and um, let's change it to this double question mark comment this one and what do we have we have empty string because name it's a string and it's some kind of default string so this operator will return default value of anonymous just in case if we have null value null or undefined so it's more strictly strictly types so in case if not name was a string but it was empty string it will be empty it will show empty value but in case it was undefined or null and we want to show a string it will show this value and the same for age let's copy age and two question marks so right now it shows zero because because age is a number and uh, we won't set default value number, but zero h is okay. In case it will be null, we will have default value 18. So it's how this operator works. Okay, let's comment it and let's go to the next one. So the next one, optional chaining operator. It's a great uh, new feature. So let's take a look again on the same right person. Person, it's object. We have person and we won't get some information. We don't know anything about data inside, so we just want console log person file name or the same anonymous. And now we have error because we can't get the name of undefined profile. It's right now undefined because we didn't describe it and we have this error. So to solve this problem, we can use optional chaining operator. Let's again copy console log person. Now it will be question mark dot profile question mark dot name or the same anonymous okay let's comment this one and what do we have in our case right now we have anonymous well because this one it was undefined so let's remove it and the result is undefined. So this operator it checks if uh, we don't have profile, it doesn't go with the next one and just return undefined without error. Or we can use the previous one option, some default value. Okay. And uh, what was the previous solution? Previously, when we didn't have this operator, we should to implement such functionality in this way. So we can console log, and we have to check. If we have person, then if we have person profile, and then we just try to open show person profile name. Let's comment. And it's undefined, but take a look on the difference. This one is a big operator with a couple of checking. Do we have some internal value and go deeper and deeper? With optional chaining operator, we can simplify our work. So now it looks much, much better. And the last one, it's a new type of data. It's new primitive data, it's big int. Okay, let's take a look on big int. So why? So why do we need it? 
Okay, let's take a look. Right now in JavaScript we have just one number data type, it's number. And uh, let's take a look on max value. Let's get number max save integer. And console log max. And it's a maximum value of integer. And in case you try to do something with this value, we will get very strange errors. So let's take our console max plus one. And again, max plus two, for instance, and plus three. And uh, as you can see, it was 991, then two, and uh, again, two, but we increased on, and then it was four. So right now it doesn't work as we expected. And uh, let's take a look on such experiment. Let's console math. Oh. 2 in 53 and is it the same that math plus 1 what we will get yes it's true so right now we see that these numbers are the same but from logical perspective we understand that maximum value plus 1 it should be bigger but right now it's not so Begin it to the new data type, it should solve this problem. So, how it looks? Squeeze it. For example, we can create a very, very, very big number, and in the end, we need to put n, small n, and it means that this number is a big n. So. Let's try to cons console log big n. We will multiply it to n, and what we will get? Okay, it looks like like uh, begin doesn't work in code pen. So let's take a look in Chrome extension. Let's go to our console and. Uh, And create the same const big n. The latest from works fine with this well. So let's console log big n. And uh, so now we see it works fine. We even can multiple, we can multiply this value as much as we want. So let's imagine we will multiply it in this. And we, get, we will get much, much more bigger data. Right now we have no limits in JavaScript for calculating numbers. And right now we have insanely big numbers. We have no limits, so you can multiply it as, as much as you want and you will get this data, this value. And this is it. everything what I wanted to show you with the new features in ECMAScript 2020. Thank you for watching.